Uh, I really uh, appreciate you talking about green jobs. I think it's a great way to frame the climate change discussion. Um, unfortunately, there is a, a huge PR campaign going on here in South Carolina by the coal industry to try to include coal in this, in, into the new green economy. Um, I, I'm wondering, with the power that they have to run advertisements during the debates and radio ads here in South Carolina, how will you, as president, take on those industries and use the bully pulpit of the presidency to inform people that coal is not clean and that a green economy um, will create jobs for everybody? Well, let me say, first of all, thank you. Uh, you and your, and your uh, colleagues have been all over the state wearing those helmets and carrying those signs. And, uh, and I've seen these guys at events all over South Carolina. You're doing a great job, first of all. Second, um, I think this is like, I think this, what you're asking about specifically, really applies pretty much across the board. It applies to health care, it applies to trade, it applies to tax policy. The most important tool that the President of the United States has is the bully pulpit. And being able to galvanize public opinion around a position, whether it's global warming, whether it's green jobs, whether it's the issue of coal, which you just raised, whether it's the issue of universal health care, uh, a trade policy that's both economically fair and morally just, uh, which we desperately need in this country, uh, all those things. The president has to go out and convince America it needs to be done. And that's the thing they can't overcome with advertising on spending money, advertising on television. Because once you're the president of the United States, you walk out on the White House lawn and America hears you because you have such a powerful voice. And, when, and when, when someone like the president is pushing this issue of green jobs, global addressing global warming, universal health care, and doing it in a passionate, aggressive way, you can move public opinion. I mean, you can sometimes move public opinion even against uh, a president like George Bush on the war. I mean, look at what's happened. George Bush has continued to say the war is going great, we should just stay on this course, but America has finally rejected it and public opinion is moving in the other direction. Just think about what happens if instead the president is pushing America in the direction it naturally would want to go anyway. Uh, it's just a very, very powerful dynamic. So I think that's the way you do it. And I think the, the voice of the president of the United States is an incredibly powerful tool in doing the right and just thing, which are the things that, that we've been talking about. You're welcome. I'll do what you want me to call. How about this lady right back here? Thank you. I'll just go around the table. My name is Johnny Ray Craig. I first in, uh, met you back when I was living in Stanford, Connecticut. My, my concern, and we, we hear about the problems. We hear about the problems. We live the problems. What I am concerned about is I'm 72. I was born in Alabama. I lived under George Wallace in Bull Carmen, where my parents couldn't vote. I can vote now and I do vote. I'm very involved. But it seems like segregation, especially in our public schools, is rearing its ugly head. I want to know, and you don't have to tell me, just tell me you do have a plan. You will put together a plan for every child to have an equal opportunity to an excellent education. The new separate, hostile, and unequal. It's coming. America, We want. you don't have to tell me your plan because I want it to be a plan that you're going to get a group of people together and put it together because clearly, clearly, leave no child behind. It's not working. It's not working. It was not funded right. So, you don't need to know about that. I want you to say yes because I plan to vote for you. I even vote for you. Lieberman when he was Democrat and when he became an independent because I was back in Connecticut. That's what I wanted. I, I don't care what call y'all. I want to know that you're going to allow these children to have an opportunity for an equal opportunity. Excellent education. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your vote, first of all. I'm proud to have you. Uh, the answer to your question is 
yes, I will. And I won't, since you told me not to, I won't go through the whole plan. I got lots of ideas about what I think needs to be done. But you have put your finger directly on a huge problem in this country. We have two public school systems. We got one for poor kids and one for everybody else. And whether it's in the inner city or out in the poor rural areas. And it's not right. If we actually believe what I said earlier, that the men and women who work in the mill are as much as, worth as much as the man who owns the mill, that every, every child in this country, black, white, Latino, wherever they live, whoever their family is, deserves the same opportunity, then we got work to do. And I, I'm prepared to do it, which means no child left behind has got to be changed. We've got to have universal preschool for four-year-olds. We've got to get money into these poor schools. We've got to help turn those schools around. But we, we have a responsibility to do that. And I feel that responsibility, and I do feel it personally, and I will do everything in my power as president to do something about it.